following what's known as the desirable difficulty um, train of thought where um, researchers including Bob Bjork and Elizabeth Bjork and others have shown that the best conditions for learning aren't necessarily those that we've been taught, which is to say usually um, people have, teachers and coaches have wanted sort of stimulus free environments shut off from the rest of the world, um, you know, a quiet environment, fully hydrated, um, where everyone feels good and only one thing is being addressed and then it's addressed um, without the distraction of including any other skill or other practice or anything like that. Um, the traditional methods uh, involving what we call massing and blocking are still highly accepted and by that we mean that uh, most coaches and teachers still feel that it distracts a young learner if he is asked to um, analyze any other information than the thing that's in front of him. So he just does one task one way and uh, hopefully there is an improvement in that performance during that time, um, but he's not asked to do anything else or to complicate it by adding other factors into uh, his performance during, during training or practice. One of the surprising things to more traditional coaches and teachers is that varied practice um, is much more beneficial than, you know, the highly overscheduled, you know, homogenous kind of practice where you do where you mass and block um, the skills that you're practicing. Um, we try to introduce as often as possible different skill sets, different problems, and force the learner into um, the more important part of learning, which is to figure out you know, what motor program he needs to use for this situation. Um, to do it and then analyze its effects or results and how I did on that. So um, the transition, we hope, to more variable practice um, using um, a technique called interleaving is an example where we introduce different clubs um, in the practice uh, of a golfer, um, different uh, shot shapes, different targets, different uh, everything. Um, we don't want the player to, um, we, we call it go to sleep on us, where he's just hitting the same shot over and over, maybe or maybe not to a target. Um, but there's fairly ample evidence showing that not much is really going on in the brain when you're doing uh, massed and blocked training. Um, the, the brain is not challenged. Uh, the learning mechanisms, um, and that's a, admittedly a very vague term, uh, in the brain are activated when you are doing something that's desirably difficult. That's something that's sort of in that, you know, sweet spot where you can do it, uh, but it's hard. <laughs>